The number one question I still get asked on my channel in the comment section in emails is acoustic foam, acoustic panels, do they soundproof a room? And the reason why a lot of people ask that question, it makes perfect sense. Anywhere you look online, a lot of places is they say yes, it does, especially the people that recommends this because you know what? It's quite easy to just sell a product and say that it'll soundproof your room. The thing is, this is not a soundproofing product. So when somebody would ask me, does acoustic foam and acoustic panel soundproof a room? The answer is no, but we're talking about reducing noise within a room or reducing noise outside. It's all about noise reduction. Soundproofing is blocking the sound waves with heavy, dense material like an extra layer of drywall where acoustic panels and acoustic foam, however, they're not a soundproofing product. They're a sound absorption material. They're not a soundproofing material. That's the reason why you see a lot of sound absorption material like acoustic foam and acoustic panels in theaters, in recording studios, in conference rooms. What this does, it doesn't soundproof the room. It doesn't block sound from outside the room coming in. The reason why I have acoustic panels behind me and on the other side of the camera where you can't see is because it soaks up the echo in the room and it elevates the sound quality of the room. Where this comes into play with noise reduction is that if you are doing something in the room and it's creating a lot of echo, and then you add some acoustic foam or acoustic panels onto the wall, that will soak up the echo, so it will make as though the noise in that room is not as loud to the people outside that room. However, if the noise is coming from outside the room, the sound waves are going to come right through, and acoustic foam and acoustic panels are not going to really help in that way. But really, why the confusion? Why are so many people recommending these as soundproofing product? Well, the misinformation online, which I talked about earlier, a lot of people are using this as a marketing tactic, as a soundproofing product where they can just sell a bunch of these and you just hope it works. And they hope that you don't return them. The other thing is just complete DIY oversimplification. And I've seen it before. I've seen it in other people's videos. This video got a lot of views and I'm sure a lot of people bought some acoustic foam just to soundproof their own because that's what it appeared what happened in that video. So DIY oversimplification. It's so easy for somebody just to say, go ahead, buy these, buy those. But what are you trying to do? Are you trying to soundproof the room, stop the sound waves, or are you trying to make the room sound better, decrease the echo? Well, if you're trying to make the room sound better, adding some acoustic foam about between 25 and 30 percent of the walls filled and acoustic panels. Now, acoustic panels, they cost more money, but they work better and you can also build them yourself, which I have a video right there which shows me building this acoustic panel. And the thing is, you can build a dozen acoustic panel for about the same price as 50 of these and a dozen of acoustic panels will work better than 50 of these. Trust me. But if you're looking to soundproof the room, forget about acoustic foam, forget about acoustic panels. What you want is, well, first of all, you want to figure out what type of noise you want to soundproof for because that's another confusion when you're looking into soundproofing because there is vibrational noise where let's say somebody's walking upstairs and you hear the footsteps or there is airborne noise, people talking where it's not causing a vibration. These two types of noise requires two completely different types of soundproofing and also that's where a lot of people lose their money. Whether it's thinking you can soundproof with this or thinking that adding an extra layer of drywall onto the ceiling is going to stop those footsteps. It actually isn't. The difference if you're trying to soundproof for vibrational noise and for airborne noise is simple. 
the vibrational noise. What you want to do is you want to decouple the structure. So basically you want to add something called resilient channels to separate the ceiling from the floor above. Now what happens there is all the vibrations from the footsteps are dissipated into the resilient channel and does not come down. But if you're trying to soundproof for airborne noise, all you need to do is add mass to that ceiling. And an extra layer of drywall will do the trick at blocking some of those sound waves from coming down. And make sure to use a 5 8 of an inch drywall because it's thicker than half inch drywall and it doesn't cost that much more. But if you just slap an extra layer of drywall onto the ceiling, it's not going to do much for you to stop hearing those footsteps. If you want to soundproof a room and you want to do it, let's say on a budget, let's say $100 is your budget. $20 for the window, door, floor, ceiling, and wall. $20 a piece. Can I do it? The answer of that is yes, and I also have some sound tests to prove it. Video right there. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, leave a comment if you have any soundproofing questions, and I also have a members section where you can join ask questions there or if you have a bigger soundproofing project that you want some advice on, that you want some help on, that can save you a lot of money and confusion, you can also opt for that choice.